in one of the most iconic moments in television history, the Game of Thrones writers walked a character named Cersei Lannister through throngs of her people, stark naked, followed by a woman in a habit, ringing a bell and shouting, shame, 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 shame again and again, as a religious figure sought to subjugate and victimize this very, very strong woman. Queen Cersei would never be the same afterwards. And it's not hard to imagine from where the writers drew this imagery, because shame tends to be a very powerful tool in religious life. It's like a hook designed to bring people back into bounds. It's built to stop us in our tracks and to look to the religious power for relief. Shame is meant to change us and to whip us into submission. And public punishments do this as the observers will then absorb or even enforce the shame around them. So think of like crowds yelling at someone. And I think also, of course, of the flaying of our ancestors by overseers, always in front of others, always enforcing the shame, building up the deterrent. And hangings, crucifixions, lynchings make use of this shaming as well. Shaming is a violent deterrent, which is why it's such a shame that we employ it so often. And this turns me to this iconic text from Genesis. It's a text used throughout the ages to justify shaming and violence against pretty much anyone but cis hetero men, which is in itself a true shame too because it didn't have to be that way. Read the text and see what it says, not what people told you it says. And you see that the story opens gently. God walks in the garden in the cool of the day. God sees God's people as God always does, and but then finds them feeling ashamed. And do you see? God actually grieves their shame. Do you see it? God grieves their shame. God didn't want the first humans to have to experience shame, and God tried to protect them from it. So why, why on earth do we, in religious life, continue to employ shame? This, I truly believe, in itself is a form of collective sin. Now, the first humans had some curiosity about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they decided to take a bite. But God had wanted to protect them from that, to shield them from information God believed they couldn't bear, to protect them from the violence of shame. But the first humans chose differently. And you have to understand this. God didn't do it. Humans did. Shame was our invention that God actually resisted. Do you see that? So where do we go from here? I truly believe that God will never give us more than we can bear, but that doesn't mean that the world won't. It just means that God won't, but the world. Sometimes the world doesn't care about our truths and our needs and our feelings. The world will do it as it will and we will wind up with circumstances that we can't handle. Does it help to know that God didn't do that? Does it help to understand that whatever you need that feels outside of your reach, whatever pain you're holding, that God did not do that? Does it help to know that those bills you or someone you love can't pay or that illness that you're struggling with, or the shame they try, keep trying to put on you for who you are, does it help to know that God didn't do that? So what did God do? God sent us Jesus to love and follow. God conquered death. God decried the acts of injustice. God promised to return. God saved you. God holds you. And God sent you a spirit to intercede on your behalf. And that's God's agreement with you. When it gets unbearable, the Holy Spirit bears with you. When they try to riddle you with shame, the Holy Spirit will never shame you. 
When it feels like you're completely alone, the Holy Spirit will hold you when nothing else will. Folks, now is the cool of the day. Feel God seeking you, even this very instant. Seeing you in your nakedness and loving every part of you. Embracing you as you are, not as you might be. Telling you, enough of the shame. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Thanks be to God. Amen.